This is the tale of how one man's jealousy and greed drove him to march his legions into Parthia in a bid to control the Silk Road with disastrous consequences. Let's take a look at how the battle unfolded and try and uncover what happened to these doomed men. The year was 53 BC and Marcus Licinius Crassus, a wealthy politician and one of the members of the First Triumvirate, was determined to make his mark in history. The Triumvirate was a political alliance of three powerful individuals of the Roman Republic, consisting of Crassus, Pompey the Great and a young up-and-coming general named Julius Caesar. Each of them had established themselves as powerful figures in their own right before forming the Triumvirate. They were all successful military commanders. Caesar was a popular leader, Pompey had a huge following and Crassus was one of the wealthiest men in Rome. After their combined efforts in crushing the slave revolt led by Spartacus, the three men formed an alliance in order to further their own interests and gain greater political power. Caesar was appointed as governor of Gaul, Pompey was given control of Spain and Crassus was appointed to Syria. They used their combined influence to push their agendas and secure key political appointments. Despite their immense wealth and political power, the trio became filled with envy and were distrustful of each other, each longing for even greater influence and prestige. Crassus had a deep-seated jealousy of Caesar's military prowess and Pompey's popularity, which fueled his ambition, leading him to make a series of strategic moves to increase his own power and secure a place in the annals of Roman history. He saw the Parthian Empire as the perfect opportunity to further his political aspirations and establish a military reputation that would rival that of his peers. With an army of 35,000 heavy infantry, 4,000 light infantry and 4,000 cavalry, Crassus mobilised his army and started to march, confident that his victory was assured. He led his army through Syria and marched eastwards, crossing the Euphrates River and reached the border of the Parthian Empire in modern-day Turkey. It was then, in the vast expanses of southeast Turkey, near the town of Kare, a fateful battle was about to unfold. The stage was set for Crassus, a man driven by grand military ambitions, to challenge the might of the Parthian Empire. He was met by General Serena, leader of the semi-professional Parthian army, with the world's most elite horse archers, and what followed was a historic battle that would define the future of the Roman Republic. As the two sides sized each other up, Crassus, worried about his cavalry being overwhelmed, ordered his heavy infantry to form a defensive formation, a large, hollow square with cavalry positioned within. He then sent his light infantry forwards in a probing attack, but the Parthians had an answer to this. Over 9,000 horse archers advanced, encircling the light infantry and unleashing a barrage of arrows, driving them back to the Roman lines. The Roman square held strong, but once the horse archers closed in, things became desperate. In a dire bid to turn the tide, Crassus dispatched his son, Publius, to lead a charge of 1,500 mounted soldiers against the enemy. They broke free of the Roman lines and scattered the Parthian horsemen. Seeing an opening, they charged the foot soldiers. But tragedy struck, as Publius and his men were engaging with the Parthian lines, 1,000 heavily armoured cataphracts crashed into their side breaking them, causing them to suffer heavy losses, with Publius himself rumoured to have taken his own life. As nightfall approached, the Roman soldiers were subjected to a brutal assault from the Parthian horse archers and cataphracts. Arrows rained down upon them, and the cataphracts directly engaged with the heavy infantry in a fearsome clash. The battle raised on until the last light of day had faded, leaving behind a field of carnage and a shattered army. Despite his valiant efforts, Crassus' invasion proved to be a disastrous failure. The Battle of Carre would go down in history as one of the most significant military setbacks suffered by the Roman Empire, a testament to the military prowess of the Parthians. The following day, Crassus was summoned to negotiate a truce with the Parthian commander, Serena, but during the assembly, Crassus was killed. His body left as a warning to all who would seek to challenge the might of the Parthian Empire. Legend has it that the Parthians poured molten gold into his mouth, symbolising his insatiable thirst for wealth and power. The outcome of the Battle of Carre had
had far-reaching consequences for Rome and its army. Of Crassus's entire army, over 20,000 died in battle. Only around 4,000 soldiers managed to escape back to Syria and 10,000 were captured, becoming the subject of much speculation, becoming known in legend as the Lost Roman Legion. The exact number of Parthian casualties remains unclear, but it is widely accepted that the losses were minimal. This is where the records of the forgotten men start to dwindle. The only available first-hand account of the fate of these Roman prisoners is recorded by Pliny. According to Pliny, after being transported across Parthia as captives, the 10,000 men were taken to Merv, a city located on the easternmost fringes of the empire. The Parthians had a custom of utilising captive soldiers as border guards. This relocation so far from home would have made it futile for the soldiers to escape, and they would have to come to accept their fate. In his work on Roman history, Florus tells us that during Mark Antony's invasion of Parthia, a survivor from the disaster of Crassus, dressed in Parthian costume, rode up to the camp, and having uttered a salutation in Latin, thus inspired trust by speaking their language. So it is possible that some of the survivors joined with the Parthians and settled in the east. One of the most intriguing theories was proposed by American Sinologist and Professor at the University of Oxford, Homer H. Dubbs. Dubbs believed that years after the battle, the Roman soldiers in eastern Parthia found employment as mercenaries for the local leaders in the area, including the Huns in their conflict against China. As evidence for this, he cites the Battle of CC, which took place in present-day Kazakhstan in 36 BC. The battle was between the Western Han Dynasty and a Changnu chieftain, CC Chanyu. It was described that a unit of men in a fish-scale formation held their ground on either side of the gate, a reference, perhaps, to the Roman Testudo formation. As the battle concluded, it is suggested that the Roman mercenaries eventually surrendered to the Western Han dynasty, but the Chinese were so impressed with the soldiers that they took them back to China to become part of a border guard in modern-day Gansu province. A town was established for them named Li Jian, which was quite possibly named for the Latin Ligio or Legion. There is DNA evidence that over 50% of the villages in the area have Caucasian ancestry including green and blue eyes, taller height and distinct Roman noses. The people of the region proudly celebrate their ancestry with Roman statues and bulls decorating the local temple. However, there are many historians who disregard this. They state that the description of the fish scale formation is vague and could have been inspired by Greek or other cultures. The Caucasian DNA could have come from countless other places and the linguistic similarities of the town of Li Jian is purely coincidental. What do you think happened to the Lost Legion? Let me know what you think in the comments.